Hey guys, it's Jack Norton. Um, I'm making another video today. My most recent video was yesterday about the Syrian airstrike. And it was a jumbled ass video. Uh, my information was all written on like four pieces of paper. Uh, facts, sources, talking points, and they weren't in order. So I was like jumping from one thing to another, just being super disoriented and just so jumbled um and I was trying to play 007 Legends at the same time like I'm doing today so I was like just super distracted but like before I get into this new topic of the video basically what I want to reiterate is from the points of my two videos I released yesterday and basically what I'm trying to say is uh just to make it more clear is uh, Bashir al-Assad, or al-Bashir Assad, uh, has no chemical weapons. I don't believe he did the attacks at all. Uh, I don't even believe, in my previous video, I actually said that, uh, Assad attacked his people back in 2013, but I, uh, I was just, like, totally misspoken. I didn't know what I was saying there for a minute. But, remember, al al Nursara, al-Qaeda, and the rebel groups back in 2013 did the chemical attacks. That wasn't Assad at all. And how did we figure that out? It was by a UN investigation. When at the same time in 2013, Obama addressed Congress or State of the Union saying, like, a red line has been crossed with the chemical weapons. Um, we need to, like, do airstrikes in Syria. I don't know. It was, it was just a fucking bad idea, whatever Barack Obama was presenting back when the supposed red line was crossed by Assad. Even though UN does its own investigation separate from the United States and says, yeah, this was totally carried out by al Nusra. Um, we're going to have Assad uh, attend this accord, which uh, was like back in September 27th of 2013, to investigate if uh, their chemical weapons uh, stockpile. And they immediately signed the accord, Syria did, and turned over their chemical weapons stockpile of, of sarin gas and other deadly gases that they had in possession but never used. So ever since 2013, Assad hasn't been able to use gas and he's never used gas from 2013 to now. And maybe he's never ever used gas before, but I know during the Arab Spring he killed his own people, but we didn't give a shit. It, it wasn't affecting us back, uh, I mean 2011, yeah, during the Arab Spring. We didn't give a shit at the time, and yeah, Assad's a bad person. But we had bigger issues to take care of at the time in regards to our dirty work. During 2011, in, in the heat of the Arab Spring, we were too busy fucking over Egypt and Libya. And the same thing happened with Muammar Gaddafi. Now, I don't think Muammar Gaddafi was a good person, but he was actually a good leader to the Libyan people. And the reason why we overthrew Libya and destabilized them along with, with Egypt temporarily is... Uh, Gaddafi was going to establish the gold dinar. The gold dinar is a currency that he wanted to centralize throughout all of the African continent so they could prosper, kind of like a, a euro, like the eurozone in, in the European Union in, in Europe. And the United States realized that's going to affect oil big time. That's going to affect the resources we need big time. That might even interfere with Saudi Arabia, with how rich they are with their oil. So we immediately made up excuses why why Gaddafi is, is just a terrible person that needs to be overthrown now. So we we stirred shit in Libya, we, we, we have the mystery of Benghazi now. We overthrew Gaddafi, stabilized northern Africa even more. We took uh, the Egyptian president, the Egyptian president got out of power, then I believe uh, they, they had an actual democracy, they voted in. Uh, I forgot his name, but he was part of the Muslim Brotherhood. The U.S. couldn't stand it, but we would look like even more assholes if we overthrew a democratically elected leader. So we had to sit there and wait, and then Sisi, uh, the current leader and uh, coup general, like he, was, he threw a coup against the Muslim Brotherhood president of Egypt back then. So now Sisi's in power. It's just funny how whenever something bad happens, or if there's a bad person doing stuff right now, we'll let it happen until it's in our interest. Then that's when we use the excuse of, 
of even if we have to lie saying oh Assad's a terrible person like let's say we tried to interfere back in 2011 of he shot his own people in peaceful protest crowds but like I said earlier he didn't give a damn because he had no interest with the United States at the time now with these crossing pipelines in Syria that's when we uh, have our little Saudi puppet masters um, and even Qatar's uh, puppet masters go tell us, hey, you need to take out this Assad guy. I don't give a shit what it is. These rebels recently gassed um, the Syria. So it's like, go in there, uh, tell your uh, gullible Americans that, that Assad is gassing his own people so we can go in and get our big money interests and our oil interests done. So that's just reiterating my first, my, my whole point of the video yesterday is I think this is a bit of a false flag. Now, I, now I'm not saying that the uh, April 4th attack never happened. It did. I think there were disgusting rebels that killed 80-something civilians and 27 children. And it was absolutely terrible, but it was not by the Assad regime. And this facility that we bombed, the Al-Shirat uh, airfield, we claim to have that they claim to have chemical weapons, but what what happened in Iraq when we attacked Iraq? What was our excuse for attacking them? We're storming Iraq to find the WMDs. It's the same parallel connection that again we need to be cautious of. So I like my last video, my last two videos were so stupid. I sounded like a goddamn uneducated idiot. Now that like I can sit down and focus, like I'm just gonna reiterate. I'm just reiterating what I said, and. To conclude it, it's just that we, we, we've we done it before, again, uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, so it's just, don't believe what the media is saying, because I, I, I wouldn't doubt if the CIA, back in 2013, gave, gave the rebels the chemical weapons, because if you think about it, we started the Mujahideen back in the 80s. We funded the shit out of them, which I believe transformed into Al-Qaeda. We used to be allies with Al-Qaeda. Um, we're, we're friends with the terrorists, if it's with our interests, and then they turn against us because guess what? That's a terrorist nature. And to, to be honest, if it's a war on terror, it might as well be on a war on ourselves because almost... I would say 7 to 8 out of 10 countries throughout the entire world would say the greatest threat to world peace is probably the United States. And another thing I like to point out is a big, big time libertarian Ron Paul, who I actually like a lot but tend to disagree with him on a couple economic issues. There's a laundry list of issues I agree with Ron Paul on and disagree with Ron Paul on. And he says the... April 4th attack and blaming it on Assad makes absolutely no sense. So that was just, this first eight minutes was just to reiterate uh, what, what I meant in the first two videos. So if, if you're seeing this now, don't watch those first two videos ever again, because if you want to tangibly understand what I'm talking about, watch this. And another topic I just want to talk about for fun is who my favorite president is. So, my favorite president of the United States is actually a little surprising. It's Jimmy Carter. People often say he's one of the worst presidents ever that was ever around. Okay, I just paused the video just now because I like had a Marco Rubio moment where my throat was super dry. So, I had to run to the kitchen and get some water. I might have to do it again. It feels really dry because of these allergies. But, people often regard President Carter as one of the worst presidents, like, ever, which, let me debunk that first, uh, we had Andrew Johnson after Abe Lincoln, he was a white supremacist, so that's, like, an automatic, like, DQ of, okay, well, would that make Carter the second worst president? Well, we had George W. Bush, who trampled on our, uh, Fourth Amendment, many constitutional rights, maybe even our First Amendment, and who committed war crimes with this whole administration. I wouldn't say George W. Bush is definitively the, the second worst president, but he's he was a worse president than what people claim for Jimmy Carter. Another one I'd like to point out is Franklin Pierce. He was just a depressed drunk who didn't even know how to do his job. So I have more than enough examples to, to, de to debunk, uh, debunk 
that Carter was just this worst president. He was he, uh, Ronald Reagan was a worse president than Jimmy Carter, mostly because of his false economic growth and his unconstitutional wars. And even Iran Contra alone was horseshit. And don't give me the bullshit that Ronald Reagan released the hostages because for the last two months of Jimmy Carter's lame duck period, uh, after he lost the election, election. He was up every single night negotiating with the Iranian government to get the hostages released. So that's just bullshit. It was just the Iranian government spiting Jimmy Carter. So they waited till past noon where Ronald Reagan was seated as president to send the airplane to the United States to release the hostages. So Jimmy Carter actually was successful in getting every single hostage alive, which is amazing. And... Yeah, he took care of the situation, even though it took over a fucking year. So I just wanted to quickly get that out of the way, with people saying, it was actually Ronald Reagan who got the hostages released? No, he didn't. How could he do the job as president, like, like right as he puts his hand on the Bible? Like, you have to get through the, the Washington Parade, or Pennsylvania Avenue, wherever they take the parade route. You have to get through the inaugural dinner, inaugural address, it's like he, he, like the, really the president doesn't get work done until like their sixth day in the office because there's so much media coverage where they can't get shit done. So no, Jimmy Carter's not the worst president, but I'll give it this. He, he was, he was incompetent as president. He, he his heart was, was too big and he was naive to what, what would have actually come because being a politician isn't being an honest person, and Jimmy Carter thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to come in as myself into, into Washington and change it. Well, there were too many corrupt people surrounding him that was obstructing him from, you know, getting the right thing done. God damn, I always get confused with this part, trying to find Felix Slider. I have no idea where he goes. I'll just jump over this. So, the reason why I think why Carter is my favorite president is because he was the best human being to be in the office of president. And at first that doesn't make sense, but I'll put it this way. The best ex-president of all time right now is Jimmy Carter. He basically has eradicated two diseases off the earth that kill children in Africa, Latin America, uh, other parts of the world. With the Carter Foundation, he has stopped so many diseases that killed children, he is like a big time humanitarian. That's why, this is a fact, during his presidency, not a single bullet was shot under his administration, not a single uh, foreigner, like foreign conflict happened, it, only the, the Iranian hostage crisis, but nobody died except for, uh, I think it was the Navy SEAL team that crashed in the helicopter in the desert. But other than that, not a single bomb was dropped, not a single proxy war under Carter, which I think is amazing. That alone makes him a pretty a pretty notable president, although how he took care of the economic issues and how he took care of adjusting into Washington, I don't think he did a good job at. But still, I think he's an amazing human being, and I think he's done amazing things, and he's a way better ex-president than he was as a president. So that's just like a random topic I wanted to bring up, and that's Kind of why he's my favorite president, just because he's an honest human being who genuinely cares about people and genuinely cares about a, a work ethic of some kind. So let me take these guys out. I guess I'll just play this for a couple minutes and then, you know, I'll keep the camera on and if I have something to say, I'll just, I'll just kind of point it out. Uh, the TV glare, like, since it's like only like noon in Utah right now, the window glare on the TV is like really, really bad. Right now I'm just playing 007 Legends on 007 difficulty. I have like nothing better to do. If I still lived in Washington, I'd probably be messing around with my buddies right now and just hanging out with them. Here in Utah, I've only lived here for like about a year now, even though I've lived in Utah most of my life. I just moved back.